This is my good friend, Lisa Fortier. She coaches basketball at Gonzaga. I think that there's, what we're gonna talk about today is gonna be something that resonates with you all deeply. And before we do that, I want to start off with a clip. This clip is from the movie Chef. Anybody seen that movie? It's basically a chef that has gotten a negative review from a critic, and he is going to confront the critic and tell him what he thinks. Take a look. Stop it for a second. Just, just. I've been waiting to talk to this prick for a long time. Okay. I am not cloying. I am not needy. I don't care what you think. You're not getting to me. I'm not needy. Chocolate lava cake is not just undercooked chocolate cake. That's not what makes the center molten. You take a frozen cylinder of ganache and you set it in the ramekin so that as the outside cooks fully, the inside becomes molten. Okay. Okay. It's fucking molten, see? It's fucking molten, you asshole. And you don't do anything. What do you do? You sit and you eat and you vomit those words back to make people laugh. You know how hard I work for this shit? Do you know how hard my whole staff works? What sacrifices make to make you happy and then you just smugly just fucking shit on my shit? Okay. It hurts! Yes. It fucking hurts when I, you write that shit. It hurt you. It does. It does. He was, you, he thought he was going to close his fucking restaurant down. You asshole. And what do you do? You just write shit to make, you just make shit up. My shit was molten. It's fucking molten. Asshole. You're not getting to me. Okay, okay. You're not getting to me. Okay, Carl. He's not getting to me. No, he's not. I know, but you're a publicist. Don't you have relationships? Isn't that what you're hired to do, to take things like this off the internet? <laughs> <laughs> so you watch that, you think what? My first thing is, why do I have to, why, why are you showing me that clip? Well, <laughs> and if you were going to answer that question, you would say what? Uh, I sometimes feel like that guy. Um, you're not getting to me. You're definitely not getting to me. Or um, trying to explain to the players something where I'm actually doing exactly what they're doing in just a more dignified or older way. Um, so that's probably why you're asking me the question. That is, and, and for those, we, we basically would Zoom once a week and just work on self-awareness, where I would just ask you questions, you would answer them, you would then go back and watch yourself as if it were someone else, and then just make observations based on what you saw. And one of the things that we talked about was criticism. And when you look at this, the, the question I pose to you is, how many times we think about being in the chef's position, where we're being criticized. Very rarely do we look at ourselves in that we may be the critic and we might be making our players feel the same way. How do you think about that? Well, I think I'm so grateful that we've been able to switch it because I definitely think that I have thought more on how to manage criticism or how to not respond like the chef or I, I take it internal a lot and um, not Sometimes, why, why are they saying these things about me or they don't know? Sometimes I take it in an unhealthy way, but then other times even I'm trying to manage it from just a healthy perspective of you see criticism, you hear criticism, you can block as much out as you can, but some gets through. And I'm just grateful that we've, I've been able to flip my switch a little bit so that I am thinking of the players. And I, I'm not perfect at it by any stretch, but at least I'm aware of, like sometimes in coaching, it's all the, um, you're giving all the feedback, you're not asking the questions, you're just you know, critically, you're telling them they're not doing this right, you're telling them they're not doing that right, and then my assistant's telling them they didn't do that right. And um, it just, to make sure that we're aware of it so that we can do it better than just always criticize, 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 um, and coach them in a way well, that even can help in the, them positively. If you think about the end of the season exits, where they give feedback, coaches can respond in a very personal way to that. Yeah, so Brett and I have talked about this before. We had um, 
a great talk about the feedback that they were given in an exit interview. And I went to my athletic director, all of our seniors do exit interviews, and I went to our AD and really wanted to get the information. Like, what'd they say? And uh, I really only wanted the good information. <laughs> Uh, I realized after the fact that I didn't want the negative uh, feedback that they had given. And then, uh, you know, after talking about it a little bit, we came to the conclusion that um, what their the inner input that they're providing is telling us just as much about them as it is about me. And so if we were able to flip the switch and think of it as what they need um, more than what I'm bad at, uh, then it's a much healthier way to work with people. And so, I mean, that's that's a big part of what we had talked about. And I think that if you have to, if you're going to ask for the information, you can you need to take it in. And I needed to. You know, one of the things was organization, or they 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 wanted the information sooner. You know, sometimes they get the schedule the day the Sunday before workout start on a Monday or something like that. And I was like, what do you mean? We're totally organized. Like, well, you guys are so lol. And actually, <laughs> the lol was me being defensive and saying, oh, they need more information. They like to plan, they're planners. You know, what, what is that telling me about those guys? Not necessarily, why are they being so critical of me? Because they were asked the question, they were asked what we could do better. Um, and when you get mad at them, this is an interesting nuance. When you get mad at someone, you basically can say, I'm angry because you're not acting the way I think you should act, right? Yes. How do you think about that? <laughs> well, I mean, it's, silly because why should they like why should what i how i think they should act to be I'm, I'm not the dictator i'm not the what, what i think of them is not uh what's who they are you know they're going to be who they are and and i need to take that information and use it to better interact with them because i'm in control of my responses to them i'm not in control of how they respond to something or how they act um i can help manage it and within a team you have to do that sometimes but that's not, their job is not to do, to please me. That's actually one of my least favorite characteristics of myself is that I'm trying to please people often. And so I don't even like that in me. So why would I expect them or why would I want them to be like that towards me? Isn't you know? that interesting? Very, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think about it because if you look at the chef, he's doing exactly what the critic is doing to him, to the critic. Sure. Isn't that kind of ironic? Yes. Yeah, I mean, that, and that's what, I mean, we all do that often, unfortunately. I, I think it's maybe it's a, unless you think about it in this way, then that's just how you respond to somebody, right? Someone cuts you off, so you speed up or flip them off, or like they're angry and you're angry. Or, you know, in school settings or in relationships, uh, oftentimes that's what happens. And I don't even think we think of it like that. It's just a change of, perspective or that you have to alter the way you think about it and then it doesn't seem then it seems very obvious that that's what you're doing you know when you're trying to defend something or um i don't know, get your get your point across or whatever it may be you lose sight of what you're doing and, and how it's exactly the same and we can understand that but executing it can be a totally different thing can you this is the headline of your local paper. Can you just explain to everyone what was happening here? Yeah, so in this particular picture, um, our team had decided to kneel. Some of them wanted to kneel for the national anthem. And um, they internally, we talked about it as a, a group. We couldn't come up with a consensus and we didn't feel like it was the appropriate thing to make anybody do one thing or the other. And so, uh, everybody had their why. We were all good with what was going to happen. We had a, a plan. If you look at the picture, you can see that um, some people who wanted to stand, um, some people wanted their hand on their heart, some didn't. They just wanted to stand. They were surrounding those that were kneeling in support because our team was um, united in supporting each other. Um, we knelt during a game that was sold out, and we had um, a few people call out to us to stand up. And then uh, the game right after, we did the same thing and several people in our, in our own gym started booing and it caused some problems. The singer of the anthem was caught off guard. She had to restart um, the song. And then we were asked about it you know, in the paper and um, it was a major struggle for our team um, just managing that part. And, and 
Take a look at that. So how are you managing that internally? Internally here? or Yeah, yeah. it was a big challenge. Um, I received 100. I received some people who are very much in support of our team, some people who didn't agree with kneeling but believe that they have the right, some people who really felt strongly, and then some people who are maybe you would call it belligerent. I mean, this, this text that I sent to Brett was probably the most harsh, um, although there were other harsh comments. And so we kind of had the, ran the gamut a little bit. And I mean, internally, I, was, I felt like the chef. I wasn't coming out like that to our players, or I, I tried when I was speaking to the media to be more composed. But internally, in my office, there was- Like, a, what's the first thought when you see that? I mean, it, it makes me shake my head. And be like, okay, fine. Like th that's not that's not s constructive, is how I feel. And um, at the same time, like that person, of course, has an opinion, and and they of course have that. I actually said um, in the media that I was, and I don't know if you're alluding to this, Brett, but disappointed that um, I use the word disappointed that our fans, um, you know, responded in the way that they did, which is unfair. This that's a way of me criticizing the critic. Because I, I could have said, you know, I, I wish that they, I wish, or they're entitled to their rights, as just as our players were. I could have said it a lot of different ways, um, but to me, you know, that was an or a time where I responded in a similar way to the chef. Whereas I, I was trying to stay steady for our team at that time and trying to support our team. Give them an idea of how much brain space this period of time was taken up by this. Well, for for me. Uh, the year prior, we had internal issues. Um, we didn't have any fans in our stands. And so, um, but it was an internal thing and it wasn't related to the anthem. It was related to something um, racially kind of associated though, a, a patch and some different things. So that year um, I spent four or five months almost every day trying to figure out what we were gonna do for the anthem. And it was after George Floyd was killed. And that was a, a major time of my life of just trying to, I mean, I have so many gray hairs I was trying to tweeze out yesterday because of that, those four months. Um, and then, you know, last year I was like, it's gonna be fine. I, I spent way too much time worrying about that. And so I waited until too long. And so I think there's somewhere in the middle where we needed to have those conversations, but it was a lot for me. And then I know our players, they felt the same way. The deliberation was challenging for them to figure out. Even the players who were standing didn't want it to seem like they didn't care about the issues. The players who were kneeling didn't want to make everybody upset. Um, they certainly didn't want to make it worse for their teammates. And it was hard. We played Stanford in the first game that we were asked to stand by some fans. And that's a huge up game, as people can imagine. Um, and then the next game, we played Wyoming. And so the Stanford game, I think our team rallied. We almost won the game. Uh, we didn't, but we, we played great. Um, there were people in tears, but we were able to right the ship. And then against Wyoming, we almost lost the game, which people would probably say we probably shouldn't. And um, it, I think that it was a lot of headspace and, for and them. as a coach, you're about to coach against a, a nationally prominent program in Stanford, and you see tears on your player's face prior to performance. What are you thinking in that moment? Um... To be honest with you, I don't know if this is the right or wrong thing to be thinking, but I was thinking like, how do I get these guys, like how do we, what do I address and how do we get them going, you know, taking that energy or that emotion for the task at hand right now. And then we can talk about it after or whatever. And, and I think that we, we briefly like checked in, like, are, we, are you guys okay? Like, and, and I think that the best thing for our team was that we had communicated it prior. We all understood what was everybody's, reason, their why, and then the, the check-in that was brief, but appropriate for the time. We didn't have a lot of time. We weren't gonna, we couldn't leave the floor. We, we had one minute, uh, you know, the ref said, <laughs> until it was tip off. So I think, what can you do in that moment to get everybody organized and then we'll take care of it later. And isn't that what coaching is today? I mean, 100%. I think that crisis management or crisis seems like a strong word, but that's one of the things that I feel like, I don't know if I've learned prior and brought into coaching or coaching has taught me and I've been able to bring into my life or maybe it just goes back and forth. But that goes from, you know, someone tears their ACL, how do you respond? Or uh, there's a major life or world event and like, how do we respond? It's just 
taking, you know, and the you're current. you're so good at that. Like, I'm just going to tell you, she's very good at responding at it. The challenge is after the adrenaline wears off and you go home, that's where it gets complicated for a leader. Mm -hmm. How have you navigated those moments? Uh, not that great sometimes. I think I'm getting better at it. I'm an emotional person um, and my emotion doesn't come out in anger. It comes out in a lot of tears. I get that, I'm that kind of emotional and I'm a, a, I stress about things, I worry. And so I've worked really hard to, you know, not just to keep it what it is and not overthink it. And, you know, we talk to our players, same thing as, as with the chef thing. We talk to our players about having hard conversations or also about letting stuff go that you don't need to hold on to. And I wasn't great at doing that myself. I think I've, I've improved on it just by having the language or having a, a focus on it and being intentional with it. Um, there, I don't really know another way to do it. You just take practice. And so uh, obviously we've had great conversations that have helped me develop some of those tools. Um, but just, I think bringing the awareness to something like that is the best part to, or best way to overcome it. Well, it, it ultimately nets out to this is where we landed, that your likability is based on their self-interest. Why do you think that was such an anchor statement for you? Uh, because I'm, because I am a pleaser and you can't, you can't win enough to make everybody happy. And you can't, um, unless you're gonna create uniformity, even if you create uniformity, there's gonna be people who are unhappy. Like you're never going to uh, make enough people, everybody happy. And there's always gonna be someone who, because of their own self-interest, doesn't like your choice or your action or your, your play call or your substitution pattern. Just yesterday, I'm getting messages, direct messages. Would you just start Yvonne? Like, guys, we haven't even, I mean, the season is three months, four months away, five months away. She's going to start most likely, but like, it's just what their thing is, you know, and that's not going to go away. And so I think if I understand where it's coming from, I can laugh it off. And if I take it all personal, then it weighs on me and then the gray hairs come and well, the, and this is my last question for you. And I'd, I'd encourage everyone to ask yourself, how would you answer this question? that I was talking to a military chaplain and I just asked him, if you were talking from someone on the Taliban side, is there anything that you could say to that person that would get them to come to your side? He said, I don't think so. I then asked him, is there anything that they could say to you to get you to go to their side? And he said, I don't think so. And I said, what does that teach you about humanity? How would you answer that? Um, what does that teach me about humanity? She asked me what questions I'm going to ask her before the conference. And <laughs> you I didn't tell me any of them, uh, as, as you can tell. Um, I would say one of the things that that teaches me about humanity is that we're, what are, our conditioning is strong. And uh, the culture that we create or we're, we're impacting, I think that the question is not necessarily about humanity, but about our actions. I know there's a lot of educators and coaches here and what are we conditioning our players to not be able to change? Um, because if, if they're not gonna change and they're not gonna change, um, that's okay, you're strong in that, but maybe there's something better somewhere and we're just conditioned to be so rooted in what we know. And really what we know is a very small, small, insignificant thing compared to the, the whole world. Even if you've got, you know, your eyes as open as you can, if you're not in tunnel vision, you're still limited greatly. So I would just say for me, it's, it's that we're rooted in those things and that change is hard. And so I don't want to be a contributor in a negative way to doing that with my players or, or my family or my sphere of influence. Lisa Fortier, 